Hello and welcome back to City Skylines. This is Steelio and we're back on Firewood. Um, a big focus today is going to be uh, malls and theaters. So uh, the first big thing we're going to be working on today is going to be the Ellen Mall. This mall is not going to be too big. It's going to be comprised of uh, a few big department stores and uh, a not so big, uh, a, a decent sized general mall area, but the main uh, anchor stores are going to be Macy's, Dillard's, and Sears, I believe, but um, there's going to be a lot of parking, a lot of parking lots, a parking lot in the middle of the mall, which um, you'll see me dragging, but I think this is overall a good uh, hodgepodge of assets put together to uh, make one structure which is a mall and I think the Ellen Mall comes out really nice um but I took a lot of inspiration from different malls throughout New England like the Greendale Mall, Solomon Pond Mall but uh, I didn't want to go with a too big of a mall or too modern of a mall like uh, Copley Place or the Natick Mall which are both in Massachusetts and they're what I would consider high-end malls. I wanted this to be more of a Retail outlets, uh, general consumer, like a Big Watts, a TJ Maxx, a Michaels, Sears, Macy's, you know, what the average consumer would be buying. Not really a high end or a too low end. It's uh, right in the middle, right, right to fit. A mall that serves the general purposes and the general needs of the public, but often doesn't look like how it should. <laughs> Uh, so this mall is, I believe there's going to be three malls in this city by the time it's done. And that's not counting the strip malls or, um, some other things. When I, I'm planning to have three mall type big buildings with retail stores inside with a few anchor stores and parking and generally a big plot of space. I'm planning to have about three of those and this is the first one and this is what I would consider a pretty outdated mall. A mall like this is bound to close because it's no longer necessary with the demand of online shopping and um, stuff like that. These malls are slowly going out of business one by one but I think it's a perfect place to capture um, a building still in memory, so I think it's perfect to put in because it perfectly, it's a great asset, it's a great, uh, type of building that is prominent in cities in New England, but, uh, this roundabout building is also very similar to one in Worcester, so this building, uh, it was the parking lot for the Worcester Mall, and, Instead, I made this an office building because there isn't a round, if there was a round parking building, it would be amazing because it would be very similar to the parking lot that's in Worcester. But this uh, building, which is a 90 degree angle because I put two of them right next to each other is really interesting because it, it kind of corners off that main road and the road takes a turn and the mall is right there and it's kind of in a weird spot, but... It's got its own little area and there's no buildings in between the roads or anything. So I like the roundabout building. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it, it goes with the mall nice. It flows good. And I think the mall overall is um, an area that you can see teenagers hanging out. There's uh, general public hanging out. There's the hotel across the street. There's what looks to be like normal residential and normal commercial just right across the road the the train runs right over there right you know next to the mall so it's pretty pretty good together but right here we got the sky bridges so these connect the parking lots the two parking lots that are next to each other they connect those to the main mall so that's uh Pedestrians do not have to walk oh, across a main boulevard. Instead, they can take the sky bridge over and avoid traffic or crosswalks. And they stay nice and warm and uh, climate controlled when the climates get too much. But 
Now I'm going to take a shift over to the entertainment district. So along this street, which I have not named yet, there's going to be a lot of different entertainment. Food, uh, bars, clubs, and theaters and halls. So there's a few um, music halls like the Providence Theater and things like that. And I think those are going to be great, great assets for you know, the musical area. Because, you know, you have, like, Main Street in Worcester has the Palladium and Mechanics Hall. So, there's a good, you know, entertainment areas. Nice atmospheres. And I think that that really needs to be conveyed here. Because that's one thing that this city has to attract. Not being on the water and not being a big city. It needs its bars and restaurants to pull the, pull the weight like they do in Worcester and other small cities in New England that don't really have much to attract people with more parking. There needs to be more lots, more empty spacious lots and as many buildings as there are we need more lots because buildings just aren't perfect. There isn't a perfect building square built up at every corner so it's kind of hard to you want to make the perfect city but the perfect city actually isn't what you think it is. A perfect city wax buildings on every corner and a perfect city in one person's mind is different from the one other but a perfect city in my mind is perfectly realistic to a real city and to get that there cannot be buildings on every block there need to be open lots because that's simply how the real world works but i'm gonna wrap it up here i think the city's coming along great for the fourth episode we're making great progress and uh, i'm excited to finish up this first boundary area in the fifth episode and we can really start to getting into new things that are much more interesting and fresh so thank you have a good day bye bye